Hello everyone, this is Mike Muncy. I'm with Cooking with the Word. I'd like to invite you today to stay tuned and we're going to be talking about a wonderful subject called love. Love is something that, that we all need to have in our heart and maintain in our lives. We hope you enjoyed the uh, meal that we made today. If you if you haven't watched it, then make sure you watch. Uh, the food is absolutely delicious. The word is the most important thing. So today we're going to be in John 3, chapter 3. And first I want to say the, the greatest understanding we have about love in the Bible is the one where John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Everlasting life is a wonderful thing, isn't it? It's because God loved us. He loved us, the unlovable. We're going to go to the other John 3, 1 John 3, and we're going to read out of there. Now, love is something that if someone wants to have you explain what perfect love is. Perfect love is, is the love that God showed. Now, love is, an, is a strange thing. And the way I explain perfect love is the fact uh, that you love something and you love that you love it. Now, there's a lot of things that we love in this world that we wish we didn't love, and we don't even really like it. There's people that we really don't like, but we love them. There's people that are toxic to us. There's people that are bad in our lives, people that give us nothing but problems and, and bad situations, but we still love those people, even though we know that they're going to hurt us. We, we know they're going to let, make our lives miserable. So the definition of perfect love is to love someone or something and actually like the fact or love the fact that I do love them or that you do love them. And, and, and that's a great thing because so many things that we love that we wish we didn't love, they like, like cake. I love cake. Cake tastes great. I wish I didn't love cake because cake is not good to me. But perfect love is to love that which you love and love the fact that you love that. Now we're going to go into the, uh, 1 John chapter 3. Now we'll read a little bit to you here. We're going to start out with verse number 11. Verse number 11 says, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And, and the funny thing here is it doesn't even say we must. It just says we should. And, and when you when I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, I felt like it was hitting me in the head. And when the Holy Ghost first come upon me, it's like it ran down over me. And the first thing it done is affected my eyes. And affected my eyes, it opened it up. And my eyes started pouring into tears. And it worked its way down. When it got to my mouth, my mouth started doing things that, that I couldn't control and started saying things that I couldn't control. And when it got to my heart, I just, uh, you, you know how you tell somebody's a Christian? Uh, they ask Jesus, how do you tell? How do you tell if, if they're yours or not? It's because of their love for the brethren. And when you're a Christian, you love things that you wouldn't normally love. You love people that you wouldn't normally love. And that whether they're good for you or good to you, it doesn't matter. You love them anyway. When, I, when the night that I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, when I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I just wanted to hug everybody. And I could not imagine in, in my mind why everyone didn't want this. Why everyone didn't want this thing called the Holy Ghost, this promise that was given in Acts chapter 2. The, 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 why didn't everybody want this? It's so wonderful. But let me read on. Not as Cain, who was the wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers were righteous. Uh, perfect love, you might love someone, but you might not like them too much if, if it's not perfect love. And, and no doubt Cain... May have loved Abel, but they didn't like him because Cain didn't put forth the effort toward God that God required out of him, but, but Abel did. And, and, and Cain didn't like that. Yes, my brother, I love my brother, but I don't like my brother because my brother is doing things that, that is pleasing to God and making me look bad. Uh, you, you know, a, a lot of times people wanted to make themselves think they can make themselves look better by making you look bad. And that's not good, and that's not of God. But perfect love will love what you love. Marvel not, 
my brethren. If the world hates you, don't get excited. Don't be upset. The main thing is don't put any emphasis on the fact that the world hates you. Big deal. They hated Jesus also. So the world hates you. Why does that matter to you that the world hates you? Because you're not in his life to live this life for the world. The Bible said to come out from amongst the world and be you a separate people. Why do you are you concerned or how can you be a concern with what the world says or what the world does if you're not a part of the world, if you're not amongst the world? Let's read on just a little bit. For we know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. How do you know you're saved? All of a sudden, you love people you, you didn't used to love. All of a sudden, you love people that, that is unlovable. All of a sudden, you love people that don't love you. And, and you might not like that person too good, but you love them. You love them and you want to see them do good. You want to see them prosper. You want to see them be happy. And, and no matter how evil they are, you want them to be saved because their soul is worth so much more. You know what? Christ died in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He, drive, he died for the evil one. He died for the sinners. He didn't die for the ones that saved. But guess what? Nobody was saved. The only way you can be saved is to go through the door, which is Jesus Christ. You have to go through his blood. Whosoever hateth the brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now here's the big one, verse number 16. Hereby perceive, what does perceive mean? Hereby means for this reason, perceive or, or understand. For this reason, we understand the love of God. We understand for this reason how much God loved because he laid down his life. Imagine now, this is perfect love. Now, we was unlovable. We cursed him. We sped upon him. We turned our backs on him. No matter how much we he blessed us, we turned from him. Look at mankind. You say, well, I didn't do that. You did that because you was man. Our forefathers done that. The fathers, the ones who gave us life, they done this by them doing that. It means that we done it also. They turned their, life, their backs upon God. They turned away from God. And, and, and now this same God that we cursed, this same God that we denied his existence, this same God that we took for granted, this same God that, that we said he, he, he is no God. How could this be a God? If if God be God, why is the evil in the world? If God be God, why is all these things and blights and, and phantoms and hunger? Why does all this happen? God looked at us, the unlovable, and loved us. Hereby, or for this reason, now, now, at this time, we finally understand the love of God. Because God, this God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that controls all life. This God that spoke everything into place. This God that by his own hands reached down into the, the dust of the earth and molded us till we look just like him. Then stop there. And then he breathed the breath of life unto us. No doubt we could have been walking, talking, surviving upon this earth, but God got a hold of us. And changed us. He made man different than a dog. He made man different than a lion. He made man different than a bird. He made man different than the whales and the fishes of the sea. He made, made man totally different because he breathed himself into us and gave us life. The Bible says in him was, was life and that life was the light of men in John chapter one. And, and that life that was in him, he breathed into us so that we could be energized, that we could have life. Now, for this reason, at this time, this very hour, we understand the love of God because God set aside everything. The Bible says they looked throughout heaven. They looked throughout the earth. They even looked under the earth. And they could find no one worthy, not a, not a one, not Michael the archangel, not Abraham, not Isaac, not Jacob, not, not, not Gabriel, not anyone, not anyone ever, ever even thought of, perceived that would be created ahead of time 
behind time, above, below, anywhere that was worthy. But he said, I looked and lo, we're in the midst of the throne. Where did he look? In the midst of the throne. And he said, I saw a lamb as if it had been slain from the foundation of the earth. God, who had all glory, God, whose heavens was his throne and earth was his footstool, set it all to side that he might come down, wrap himself into a robe of flesh and walk upon this earth, feel the same sickness, the same hunger, the same temptations, the same tired. His feet got tired. He got sleepy. He, all these, he hungered and all these things that he might walk upon Calvary's heel, wrapped in this globe of this robe of flesh, have that robe tore, and all of a sudden the, the veil of the temple. Who was the temple? God himself was the temple. And that veil of the temple was when in twain, signifying that now that this robe, this flesh was tore. Now we might come in. Now we might have a possibility of eternal life. Why? Well, I understand why now. You know why? Because God loved me. Who am I? The unlovable. But now God loved me, the unlovable. Verse number 16. I'm going to read it to you again. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Surely we had ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We had ought to set aside our lives for the brethren. We, we should be able to to set aside, to, 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 to lift up our brethren in prayer, lift up our brethren in word and let them know everything will be all right. Just turn it over to Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? Don't you love him? God is amazing. Think what he done for us. Think what he done for us. He came to this earth that we might live. The amazing word of God spoke out of God's mouth, and that word, when it was spoke, came into the womb of Mary and took on flesh and was born of a virgin and walked upon this earth. Perfect. And got to know us. He longed for us to come to him, but we weren't able to go to him. So he came to us. Aren't you glad? Aren't you so happy that Jesus Christ is that wonderful? Hope you enjoyed today's message. I hope that you 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 love listening in. Call the station and let them know that you that you loved it. Like and share us on YouTube if you want to hear more. God is good. His word is eternal. His word is alive and it will grow. Do you love him? Pray for us and we'll pray for you.